just a quick overview of how I use Aura um, and integrate that, how you can integrate it into Training Peaks for those that are interested. Um, Aura, when I first get up in the morning, obviously you wear the Aura ring to bed, and when you first get up in the morning, it'll take you to the home screen, it looks like this. It'll tell you kind of a summary of what it thinks about your readiness, sleep, etc. I tend to like to go to the individual pages and look at the data. So on the readiness page, the things that I really care about are one, my resting heart rate, heart rate variability, body temperature and respiratory rate that are all shown up here. And what's kind of neat is you can click on any one of those and I just clicked on resting heart rate and you can look at your daily variance and how your resting heart rate is changing. Um, you can look at weekly, you can look at monthly, that kind of stuff. Um, since I just got done with gravel camp, you can see that, that my resting heart rate went up quite a bit in the last several days. That would be normal uh, when you're under high loading. Uh, heart rate variability tends to be the opposite of resting heart rate. Not always though. And you can see that, and, and I guess I would say is that everyone kind of has kind of an, a normal range for when you're training and everything else and, and, and how you feel. Um, 40 milliseconds for me is pretty normal. So I've had a, a, an easier day yesterday of just some walking and then a rest day. And you can see this is from gravel camp where uh, suddenly I have a big load on my body and my HRV drops quite a bit. That's completely normal and we would expect to see that. And then as you start to, your body starts to recover, you get back to a normal value. And again, you can look at it weekly, monthly, et cetera. You can see the drop here when I, when I went to gravel camp. Um, body temperature, I find this kind of interesting. They show you a daily trend. They don't show you an absolute value. So you're not gonna see that uh, a 98.6, 98.7, I suspect that's because it's on your fingers, so it's hard to get a good core temperature reading, but you can still have a, a, a relevant value in terms of whether you see it going up and down and quite unique uh, to today, my, or last night, my temperature dropped uh, 1.3 degrees. Not sure exactly why, other than probably, uh, again, recovering from gravel camp. So what I did is I just clicked, rather than the daily, I clicked the trend. And what I've found personally is that my body tends to, my core temperature tends to, or my body temperature tends to go up under high loading. So you can see as, as we enter the gravel camp type stuff, my body temperature continues to go up. And I suspect that's just a function of my metabolism being ramped up from all, all of the work and repair and stuff that it's trying to do when you're under high loading. And then as the load drops and I get into more of a recovery phase, my temperature goes back down. I, I don't know that I'd read a whole lot into it other than it's just kind of interesting to see how it varies based on loading. Um, if I go back to the 28th, um, I had a, an acute spike where it went up uh, a bit on that day. And that was actually when I was uh, infected with COVID. So you can see it wasn't a huge variance for me uh, in terms of body temperature, it did impact my heart rate variability on that day. The other thing you can look at is respiration rate. And again, this is calculated based on HRV. So, uh, you know, it's probably reasonable in, a, in terms of a general zip code, but I don't know that I'd read, try to read too much into it. But as you'd expect, uh, higher loading during gravel camp, my uh, perceived or calculated value of um, respiration went up. If you were at a gravel camp and we were 4,000, 5,000 feet for a lot of it, uh, you would expect that your respiration went up a little bit and then probably came down when you, when you came back. It may have gone down a little bit when we got to Tucson, which is a lower elevation than, than Patagonia, but you can see some variances in there. So that's generally what I look at. You can also look at the details from, as I scroll down to the lowest heart rate or uh, generally, the, the belief is that your it should be kind of a U-shape. Mine's kind of a drop and then barely comes up. Uh, in an ideal world, you'd have more of a U-shape toward the center, and then it would start to come back up as you get ready to wake up. And this is probably because I went to bed too late last night and had a couple beers. <laughs> so your body's kind of working hard at the beginning, um, 
it's not uncommon for me to have these high over 70 uh, heart rates early. And I suspect that's related to sleep stages, probably uh, REM sleep or something like that, where you get the higher heart rate values. And then later in the evening, you tend to have uh, lower values. And again, our HRV tends to be the opposite. So you see um, as heart rate come down, HRV comes up and your body becomes a little bit more rested overall. On the sleep section, um, again, you can see your total time, total time in bed, sleep efficiency, resting heart rate. And like the other ones, you can go back and, and look at things over time. You can look at your weekly totals. There's a lot of stuff that you can, that you can slice and dice if you want. Um, you can go look at your sleep details. And this is kind of estimating what your sleep stages are. And you can see the details of that if you click that open. Uh, how much sleep, deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep, and a week. I don't know that I'd get too cranked up about these. These are estimates. Most of the time, um, sleep tracking devices are not terribly accurate. Aura is supposed to be one of the better ones, but if you're seeing deep sleep of 30 minutes or whatever, I don't know that I'd get too 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 caught up in it. I know there are times when it's showing me awake that I that I don't think I'm awake. Uh, I'm probably more in a REM sleep or REM stage or something like that. But again, from a relative value, you can show one night, maybe it's better than another night, that kind of stuff. The other thing I would highlight about this one is if you forget and you're laying in bed for a while and the time is off in terms of wake up, you can hit this button and you can change the slider a little bit and change what your sleep time was uh, as well. Again, it shows you your resting heart rate and HRV during the time. If you wear your aura ring all day, you can go to the activity level. It'll show your total amount of activity. Um, let's say I wanted to look at yesterday's. I did a little bit of hiking yesterday in the afternoon. It'll import your workouts from whatever you're, whatever you're synced to in Apple Health. So uh, if you chose not to wear it during the day, you still may get information across here if you have it tied to Apple Health, um, and you'd still get credit for that kind of stuff. And so uh, if you have one of the newer rings, you get some more meditation, that kind of stuff. But frankly, uh, I don't use that that much. Really, the things that I care the most about are my readiness and my sleep. And readiness, I look at my HRV, where I'm at, relative to what I see as typical values. And if they're really depressed and I feel like crap, I may modify my workouts a little bit. Uh, one other comment I would say is having really high heart rate var variability isn't necessarily great either. Sometimes that can, that can represent an issue. So if I suddenly saw this thing going to 60 or 70 from 40 and I felt tired, I'd probably consider that a rest day if I'm at 40 or an easy day if I'm at 40 and I see this thing drop to 20 uh, or so, I may consider taking it easy unless I'm at gravel camp. <laughs> the other thing is, is if you want to try to bring this into Training Peaks, which you can, um, if you have HRV for training, it's another app that will integrate with um, Aura Ring. So, uh, many of you have used this probably standalone without an aura ring. If so, you would click down here at the bottom and you would take your daily measurement. If you have it set up for aura, you can just have it read directly from aura. To set it up with aura, you need to go into settings. And there's two things that you need to do here. One is that you need to go down and sync it to Aura, which is linked to Aura, which is at the very bottom. And you may need to put in your username and password. It's also a good idea to, to link to Health. Uh, that will take your HRV and put it in Apple Health. You can link to Strava and Training Peaks. I, Strava is kind of an optional thing, but Training Peaks is probably a good idea because in that way it will move that information, your readings, into Training Peaks. You can track it on Training Peaks. I can see it as well as your coach so that I don't, I don't look at it in the morning and then make a change to your schedule. But I would expect that you would do that if you felt strongly that it was low, if it was really low and you felt like crap that you'd call it a rest day. But sometimes it's good. It's helpful for me to look at those things 
in retrospect, to say, okay, we can see what's happening with your trend here. Your HRV is dropping uh, cons consistently over time. Maybe we need to think about rest, uh, a little bit more rest coming up. So the first thing, again, link to Aura down here. The second thing you're gonna have to do is at the very top, it says default mode, camera sensor health. We wanna select Aura. And if you do those things, then when you come back into the home screen, you'll see this read from Aura. You do need to uh, read from Aura every day after you sync it in the morning. And what I will tell you is that often it takes a while for the, the data to populate in the Aura cloud. So when you first come in, if you hit this button, it may tell you that there's no data in the Aura cloud. If there is data, if it's been an hour or two, it's usually in there, then you can go through and you can um, talk about your sleep and that kind of stuff. The cool thing is, is all of that is populated right out of your Aura Ring. The other neat thing is all of this data, once populated, will transfer to Training Peaks too as metrics. So anything that you put in here, and again, because I have this tied to my uh, uh, Strava and to Training Peaks, it knows that I was hiking yesterday. I could say, well, this went better than expected. It pulls in my TSS automatically. Uh, I'm motivated to train today, I can put that in there. Uh, it'll bring in yesterday's training duration. Uh, you can say how you feel today, mental energy, muscle soreness, uh, low muscle soreness, I'm feeling pretty good after a couple of easier days. Mental energy is pretty good. How fatigued, I'm less fatigued. Uh, things are pretty routine for me right now for training. Traveling yesterday, no. Alcohol, a little. And you can put in sick, whatever. And then save it. And so once you do that, it automatically updates uh, to Training Peaks. So all this information shortly after you do this automatically goes to Training Peaks, which is cool. What happens though if you forget to do this each day? Do you lose that data? And the answer is no. If you go back to your history, you can see that yesterday I forgot to, conveniently for this presentation, <laughs> I forgot to update my stuff from Aura to Training Peaks. But the cool thing is I can just click on it. So physically I just used my thumb and clicked on that empty spot and I can read from Aura. So it's gonna go back and pull that stuff from Aura. Um, I can then say, oh, what I want to do is show the tags. So from yesterday, tell us when I fell asleep, when I woke up, I had a rest day. Uh, I can adjust any of these sliders in terms of how I felt. You know, I still had a little bit of muscle soreness, uh, a little bit of fatigue coming back from gravel camp, a little bit unstable come from the travel and that kind of stuff. And I was traveling. Yeah, I had some, uh, a couple of beers when I got home. Um, I can save that when I'm done. And then there's a couple more uh, or one more step that I need to do. And that's, I can click it again and then say push metrics and read from training peak. So now, Again, that allows me to backfill anything that I want from the past um, to Training Peaks. So, again, it's, it's, if you've had the Aura Ring for a while and you want to go back and backfill, just click on those days. You know, I can I could click any day and just I could read from Aura. I can I can then push metrics to Training Peaks and it'll push it back to Training Peaks and update anything. So, if you made changes to tags, you could just push to Training to Training Peaks. It'll update those tags and again those tags come into Training Peaks as metrics as well. So you can, you can sort things by your motivation, uh, muscle fatigue, all that kind of stuff. There's just a wealth of information. But what I like about Aura is that it allows us to um, capture all that information within um, uh, Training Peaks and WKO as well. So that's it. That's a, kind of a long rambler on using Aura and HRV for training and, and how to get that information into training peaks.